everyone, I'm Kishmara again. And as you saw in the first video, this will be the continuation of the model to go video series. In the first video, we learned how we can create a model to go supply. And this one, uh, and in this one, we will learn what we can do with this ready to use multimodal transport model that is already created through the functionality of model to go. Um, so jumping right into it, if you can see my screen now. Um, this is what we get after we have created the model. And to get up basically uh, here, I have created the uh, graphics in a way that it gives us an estimate of the accessibility for different links. But to get a better understanding of what we can do with a uh, model to go, I have prepared some layouts which I will be opening one by one and uh, which can help us understand our network. So in this layout, we can see uh, the capacity and the speeds of the links in Munich. What we can do is uh, the, the colors basically represent the speeds of the highways and the bars, they represent the capacity of the public trans uh, private transportation. And uh, as it makes sense as well, that all of the highways and the motorways, they have higher capacity and higher speed. And if we want to zoom in, uh, we can see that inside the city center, the speed is restricted to lower limits as compared to outside, which uh, makes sense. And these sort of uh, quick analysis, they can help us understand the travel patterns for different use cases. The, uh, moving on, I can also open a Here you can see that the dark red color, it represents the main roads and the uh, orange color, it represents the excess roads. And for each zone, we can zoom in and see that the centroid of the zone is connected to a node, which is mostly on the excess road. Uh, the connected creation inside the model to go process is uh, very much sophisticated because it also takes into consideration the poise and all of the activities that are taking place in different parts of these zones. And it tries to connect the main hubs of these zones from the centroid. So for example, in this zone, we can see that there are two connectors and they are starting from the centroid and they are connecting to a node which is on the excess road. In this uh, layout, what we can see is the total home and work attribute in each of the zones. So for example, um, if I zoom out, it gives us a bit of an idea of which area is mainly commercial, where are the most of the workplaces. And this sort of information is very important while we are doing any transport supply planning or study based on the travel patterns of what kind of travel patterns there will be during the day, where people will be moving to in the morning and where will be people coming back to during the evening. Similarly, uh, if we also have an idea of the population density of the uh, model, it also can be very vital for many use cases because many of the new infrastructure projects and many of the network planning is based on this very attribute of where most of the population lives. So for example, in this layout, we can see that the city center is highly populated. Uh, this is uh, not only the number of people living inside, but this is the population density. So which is number of people divided by the total area of the zone. We can also see that uh, we have some concentration here because it makes sense because this is the city of Augsburg. But if we zoom inside our Munich city, there can be seen some of the areas even inside the city center which don't have a lot of population. And this gives us an indication of which are mostly the commercial areas, where are the workplaces and where are most of the homes where people are going to and coming from to work. So uh, these sort of analyses are very quick and they, they are also very important. They can add a lot of value to the model. Uh, they can help make decisions much better. Similarly, if I move towards the public transportation now, 
Similarly, we can also get an idea of the supply side of public transport of the uh, Munich. Here we have created the uh, legend in a way that it, can, it gives an indication of different modes of public transportation. If we want to zoom in and see what are the total number of service trips which are served by each of these modes in one day, it, it is also possible. Uh, and this sort of analysis, again, it gives us valuable information and it can give us an idea of what can be a good way uh, for people to commute between the uh, daily activities. Uh, again, we can also open the The public transport connectors they also play an important role while we are assigning the demand to the uh, model. So the uh, algorithm that is used to create the connectors for public transportation, it is also taking into consideration the walk time and the total number of lines which are served via a stop. Um, if the total number of connectors is too much for a particular use case, they can obviously be reduced using the filters that are available inside Wism. And uh, uh, yeah, okay. So finally, we have a layout on the boy data, which is coming from the here maps. And uh, this sort of information is also very critical while we are designing anything new. So if we zoom inside any particular area which we are interested in, we can understand what is the total number of buildings. Like for example, here, uh, where are the parks uh, located? What is the public places and what are the private places? Um, so this sort of analysis is very easy with model to go supply because this model can be created in approximately a day. And then we can apply these layouts which give us a better understanding of uh, the area in general. And of course, these layouts can be modified and the model can be modified for any particular use case. It can also serve as a very good basis for any strategic model or for any mob uh, mobility twin model, for example. So if you have any suggestions of, or if you have any comments, I would highly appreciate if you comment down uh, the video. And uh, thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel.